Shalom. First and foremost, let us start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Kakadash. Double honor to the elders and apostles, the great millstone, and well, peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. Shalom and Ababa Ball. Back at it when the lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Ba'ashem, El Shai. Lord's will in this video was edifying. And without further ado, just going to get right into it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and title this through the spirit, Lord willing, a unity with wickedness. All right. Unity with wickedness. You know, should we be having fellowship with wickedness, man? All right. And the answer to it is no. OK. And this lesson is inspired through the spirit because uh, yesterday at camp, all right, we had these scoffers come up. All right. And, um, you know, they always want to demonize and say stuff, okay? And yesterday we were talking about how, you know, we don't want unity. You know, we're all about division. We don't want unity. Well, <clears throat> the thing is, we don't want to unite with wickedness because the scriptures talk about how we're all supposed to be on one accord. We're all supposed to be, you know, of one mind, of one spirit, of one faith. So that's unity within itself. But the thing is, it's it's a you it's being in unison and righteousness, okay? This is um, Psalms 94 and 20. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by law? So who represents the throne of iniquity, all right? The throne of iniquity is uh, Esau Edom. Esau Edom represents the throne of iniquity, okay? They are the present rulers of this world, and they rule this world in wickedness, man. All right, that's why you go to the book of Job, chapter 9. In verse 24, it says, the earth is given to the hand of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof, if not where and who is he? Okay, and who is the wicked according to the scriptures? The wicked according to the scriptures is Esau, Edom, what you people know as the so-called Caucasian man, all right? Which Caucasian goes back to cave dweller, okay? And that's where these devils stem from. They stem from the caves, from Mount Seir, all right? And then when they, there was a certain point in time where they got pushed into the Caucasus Mountains as well, man. All right, but Esau originally stems from Mount Seir, like it tells you in uh, Genesis. All right, thus Seir was given to Edom, roughly paraphrasing. All right, Esau is Edom. All right, this is uh, Genesis 36 and verse 8. It says, thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. Okay, so nonetheless, <clears throat> the point being, the, the, shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee? You know, and that's really a rhetorical question. No, the throne of iniquity will not have fellowship with Yahweh Bashem El Shai because Yahweh Bashem El Shai is righteous. All right. And the Lord in all his works, he's righteous, man. OK, so Esau does not have fellowship with Yahweh Bashem El Shai. That's the thing. The most Esau thinks that, you know, this is truth is for him. It's not for you. OK, because these devils yesterday, you know, it was an Edomite talking about, oh, you guys don't want unity, uh, you know, popping all this shit. OK, but then when he walks down the block. That's when he really wants to start acting like a tough guy, man. But that's just going to show you how much of a coward Esau is. But nonetheless, Esau truly thinks that the Most High is dealing with him or that salvation is for everybody, man. But no, that he's under strong delusion. And the Lord said that. The Lord told the serpent that he'll eat dust all the days of his life. Dust representing confusion. Okay, so that's what these devils are. They're, in, they're full of confusion, man. When it comes to righteousness, they behold confusion, all right? And that's what they spread. They spread nothing but confusion. That's why America is known as Babylon, all right, which is Babal in the Hebrew, which means confusion. Okay. It says Psalms 50, starting at verse um uh 16. It says, But unto the wicked, the most high said, What has thou to do to declare my statutes, or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? Okay, so the most high is asking Esau. What the hell are you doing with my Bible, pretty much, you know? Or what do you have to do with me? Okay, because Esau has nothing to do with the Lord. Going back to the scripture. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee? Okay, because Esau's throne is um, based off of wickedness, man. All right? Like it tells you in um, uh, Sirach or Ecclesiastes chapter 10. And... Uh, Eight, it says, because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches got by deceit, all right? The kingdom is translated from one people to another. And that's Esau's kingdom in a nutshell, man. Unrighteous dealings, riches got by deceit, all right? You got your Federal Reserve note, 
which they keep pumping out money into the economy that's backed up by nothing. And that's why you're seeing all this inflation come out. Those are all riches gotten by deceit, man. Okay. It says the kingdom is translated from one people to another. And whose kingdom is it right now? We read it earlier. The earth is given to the hand of the wicked. So it's Esau's kingdom, but it's soon to be given to the kingdom of the nation of Israel which represents a you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and native Indians, all right, and those who may look like the other nations, but your seed goes back to uh, the nation of Israel, all right? You go back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You are an Israelite, okay? Whether you want to accept it or not, it is what it is, okay? You can't run from it. You can't hide from it. Only thing you can do is either repent or get judged, okay? That's all it is to it. All right, this is 2nd Ezra chapter 6 and verse 9. It says, For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Esau is the end of the world, meaning Esau is the end of this current age of the world, because the earth abideth forever, according to Ecclesiastes 1 and 4. So the earth will never be destroyed. It's just there will be a new ruler set up over it, man. Okay? And that new ruler is really the original ruler, if you can receive it, which is our Lord Yahweh Shai. All right, it was given to him to run the earth, you know, because the earth has a certain vibration to it, all right, and it has to be run with righteousness. If the earth is not regulated under a righteous vibration, then it starts to malfunction, okay? All right, and we brothers, we were just talking about that yesterday at Fellowship. You know, that's why the earth is not yielding her strength forth unto Cain, all right, because Esau is Cain in the reincarnation, if you can receive it, all right? And in Genesis, the fourth chapter, the Lord said that the earth will not yield her strength unto Cain. That's why the earth, you know, is not being as much as fruitful as it potentially can be. There's uh, a lack of resources, you know what I'm saying, so on and so forth. A lot of things are dying off or there's a dearth of things, if you will. All right? I mean, a lack of things, you know, scarcity in the resources. All right. Because this devil is in rulership, man. All right. But when the Israelites come back on top. All right, starting first and foremost with our Lord Yahweh Shai. All right, then you have King David, the 144,000, you know, the rest of the governing body of Israel, the one third, so on and so forth. Okay, in their own particular order. All right, then that's when the earth is starting to go back to its original state of righteousness, man, because it's going to be under a righteous vibration because there's going to be a righteous ruler. All right, like it says in Sirach the 10th chapter. It says a wise judge will instruct his people, and the government of a prudent man is well ordered. All right. It says, as the judge of the people is himself, so are his officers. And what manner of man the ruler of the city is, such are all they that dwell therein. Right. So <clears throat> let's just say you have a ruler who's righteous ruler. All right. You're going to have a righteous kingdom. You know, let's say you have a ruler who is a wicked ruler. You're going to have a wicked king. All right. It's a simple formula. Okay. Now, <clears throat> let's go. To the next scripture through the spirit. Go back to Psalms. Chapter 50. And verse 16. I'll read it again. But unto the wicked. The most I say it. What has thou to declare my statutes. Or that thou shouldst take my covenant in thy mouth. Basically saying. What do you got to do with my sword. What do you have to do with, the, with these Bible. With this Bible. You got nothing to do with this Bible. All right, This Bible is not for you. Just like back when, you know, they were building up the second temple and those heathen wanted to help join, build up the temple. But, you know, they were saying unto them, you have nothing to do with us. You know, we'll build a temple to our power. All right. But you got nothing to do with us. You know, beat it. All right. And it's the same thing. That's the same message we're pushing out on the highways and byways. This truth is not for everybody. This truth isn't even for all Israel. How much more you other nations, man. OK, because not even all Israel is meant to receive this truth. Scriptures talk about how there's going to be two thirds that's going to be destroyed of the nation of Israel. So even two thirds of our people can't receive this truth. So how much more are you heathen nations, man? OK. It's verse 17. Seeing thou hatest instruction and castest my words behind thee. Yeah, that's what Esau does. Esau hates instruction. He hates being reproved in righteousness. OK, if you instruct this devil in wickedness, he'll take that advice. But if you instruct him in righteousness, he hates that. OK, and righteousness is the true instruction, okay? It says, and casted my words behind thee. Verse 18, when thou sawest a thief, then thou consentedest with him and has been partaker with adulterers, all right? Spiritually and physically. Even though Esau's um, not married unto the Most High like the nation of Israel, but, you know, nonetheless, you know, 
point being, these devils still commit whoredoms spiritually, you know, by all their different idolatrous things that they do, all right, and their witchcrafts. All right, Psalms 50 and 18, or it's like verse 19, it says, Thou giveth their mouth to evil, and thy tongue frameth deceit. And that's what these devils are. They're a bunch of liars, man. All right, they're a bunch of liars, okay? And the track record shows they're all about deceit, okay? And you know, you know that we're in a society full of deceit when you get demonized when you tell the truth. Or they try to cover up your, your information when you're giving pushing out truth. That's how you know we're in a society based off of deceit. OK, as well, you know, when you see certain things that are um, hot topics in the government, like the C-19 and, uh, you know, other stuff like maybe, quote unquote, so-called conspiracy theories, which is well known fact that conspiracy theories were uh, was a term created by the government to basically um, demonize the people who expose them. All right. And they try to make them seem like they're crazy. So they call them conspiracy theorists. All right. That's a well known fact. So now the point being. Knowing that, okay, that's how you know that we're in a society framed by deceit. Because when you look on social media, sometimes you'll see under certain posts that are controversial to Esau's system, they'll say, oh, check here for uh, the fact check or something like that. They'll have like a little link showing a fact check and Esau basically trying to discredit the post. That's because these devils know that, you know, people are figuring out their stuff, man. People are finding them out. And the Lord said that, that he had made Esau bear, that he is not able to hide himself, man. Because when you're a liar, it's all, when you're all about deceit, it's all about hiding things too, okay? At least with this devil, okay? So nonetheless, it's like you. It says, thou citizen speaketh against thy brother, thou slanders thine own mother's son. And that's what he does. This devil tries to set up all types of uh, traps against Jacob, man. All right. You know, and he he also she always tries to downplay Jake. He always tries to make Jake, you know, cast him down from his excellency. Scripture says they always want to cast him down from his excellency, man. They always want to see Jake fucked up, man. You know, and a part of seeing Jake fucked up is slandering Jake, speaking down on Jake's name, you know, so on and so forth, man. All right. And don't get me wrong. Two thirds of our people are wicked and they deserve what's coming to them. All right. But nonetheless, you know, Esau is going to get what's coming to him, too. All right, because they're still they're still the most highest people. <laughs> Two thirds still hold a special place in the most highest heart. All right. That's why he's going to have mercy on them in the kingdom. But on this side, they're going to have to die. And that's really a part of the Lord's mercy, too, because he's taking them out of their misery. You know, because it even tells you in the scriptures, you know, weep for the weep, weep, make little weeping for the dead, you know. Because he is at rest, but weep for the fool, you know, because um, basically he doesn't have this knowledge. That's in Sirach. I think it's the 11th chapter. Well, maybe it's not. Lockia. So I got Ecclesiastes 22 and verse 11. All right. It says, weep for the dead, for he have lost the light. And weep for the fool, for he wanted understanding. Make little weeping for the dead. And this is talking about someone who is physically dead. That first dead is more of someone who is spiritually dead. Okay. For he is at rest. But the life of the fool is worse than death. So basically, the scripture is saying it's better you be dead and be put out your misery than to have than to live life as a fool. OK, to live life ignorant of the knowledge of Yahweh Shemel Shai, because that's what makes you wise. OK, this these uh, these scriptures is what makes you wise. OK, and let me back that up real quick. This pro there's a lot more scriptures to back that up, too. But this is just a quick one. Proverbs 1 and 1, the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, where Solomon is Yahweh Shai and the reincarnation, if you can receive it. All right, verse 2, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice and judgment and equity, to give subtility to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. All right, so this truth, this this um word, all right, gives us wisdom. Verse 6, it's our socket, verse 5. 
A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. All right, and these ultimate wise counsels is through scripture. So if you're if you're considering yourself a man of understanding, that means you attain unto the wise counsel of the scriptures. All right, verse six to understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. Verse seven, ye the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. All right, so what is fearing the Lord? Fearing the Lord is keeping his ways, doing that which is pleasing in his sight, which is keeping his righteous commandments, okay, to the best of our abilities, all right? And it's more it's more than just what's in the Torah. It's everything the scriptures command us to do to the best of our ability, all right? Torah, also known as uh, Tawarah, all right, in the Hebrew, Tawarah, all right? It says... Um, Fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. So when you fear Yahweh Shem El Shai, then you will increase in knowledge. All right. It says, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So if you despise wisdom and instruction of the Lord, you're a fool. Okay. You're a fool. All right. Nonetheless, let me go and get, let me just uh, move on with this to the spirit. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 20. It says, but I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils, man. So we're not supposed to be fellowshipping with devils, man. All right. And you saw there's many different scriptures that refers to you as the devil. OK, because you are devilish like, man. All right. You are like the devil because devil means deceiver. All right. And that's what you are. You are a deceiver. We just read that earlier. Who, you know, frame of mischief by law and his tongue speak of deceit, roughly paraphrasing. You know, that's what you're about. You're about deceit. Okay. So the Lord, he's not dealing with you, man. All right. So if the Lord's not dealing with you, we're not going to be dealing with you, man. We don't have no business with you, man. All right. We're not trying to unite with you, man. Okay. The scriptures say we're supposed to uh, hate evil and love the good. So if we're supposed to hate evil and love the good, how are we going to unite with wickedness? The scriptures say, can two walk together except they be agreed? You know, and we're not in agreement with you. We're not, we don't agree with you devils, man. All right. Because you don't agree with Yahweh for Hashem, Yahweh Shah. Yahweh, meaning he is, he exists, which is the name of the heavenly father, the true name of the heavenly father, who the world ignorantly calls God. And Yahweh Shai means he saves, he delivers, man. Okay, which is the true name of the only begotten son who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. All right. And Baha Shum is in the name. Ba meaning in, ha, the, and Shum name. Okay. So like the scripture says, this is verse 21. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. All right. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the tables of devils, man. So we can't be half foot in this truth, half foot in a wicked ass world. No, we have to be both feet in this truth, all right? And if both feet are not in this truth, man, then we're going to be destroyed, okay? And that's plain and simple. So, point being, we don't have any fellowship with you devils, okay? We don't unite with wickedness, man, all right? This is 2 Corinthians 4, it's like 2 Corinthians 6 and 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion have light with darkness. Yeah, so you're not supposed to be unequally yoked together with unbelievers, man. You're not supposed to be around unbelievers, you know, and yoked up with them. Okay, the scripture say in Psalms, blessed is the man that sitteth not in the congregation of the ungodly, roughly paraphrasing, man. You know, so you're not supposed to be, you know, 24-7 associating yourself with worldly ass people. They're, they're, the scriptures say evil communication grew up good manners. You know, so if you're constantly around people who are evil and they have evil conduct, that's going to corrupt your good manners, man. All right, because we're in the flesh, okay? And that's the thing. The present society can sway us in the flesh if we're not grounded in the spirit, okay? And that's a, and that's facts, all right? Because scriptures talk about the bewitching of naughtiness doth obscure things that are honest, meaning the bewitching of naughtiness, meaning when someone bewitches you, like they're like putting you under a spell, to go after naughtiness, all right? And it says obscure things which are honest, meaning it darkens things which are honest, which is our conduct in uh Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right, and the scriptures talk about having an honest conduct. All right. 
It says, 1 Peter 2 and 12, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles. Conversation going into uh, conduct. All right. It says that whereas they speak as you speak against you as evildoers, they may by you, by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify the most high in the day of visitation. Yeah. So they may talk shit, you know, wrongfully, but yet they, but when they look at their works, you know, they have nothing that they can hold against you, you know, so to speak. All right. Why? Because we're keeping an honest conversation, man. All right. This is Second Corinthians 6 and 15. And what concord? Hath Mashiach with Belial. So what? So what agreement does Yahushai have with uh, demons? You know, even though if he can receive it, Yahushai has dominion over the demons. Okay, and he's able to usurp authority over them. All right, but at the end of the day, they're both technically on two different missions. All right, because Yahushai, he stands for righteousness, and demons, of course, stand for wickedness. Now they both play a role in the Most High's movie in righteousness. Okay, because the Most High created the demons. Through Yahusha, if you can't receive it, all right? Because the scripture talk about how he created all principalities, all right? That's in Colossians, the first chapter, all right? And that was referring to our Lord, Yahusha. The Most High gave him the spirit to do so, all right? Scripture say, the Most High say, he creates good and creates evil. I make the light and darkness. I create peace and evil. Rest paraphrase. I, the Lord, do all these things. So, yeah, the Most High, Yahusha, they have their part with the demons, but as far as the ministry is concerned, we're not supposed to be dealing with these demons, man. Okay, it says, or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? Right, so you're a believer, okay, and you how about Shemal Shai, you know, what part do you have with unbelievers, man? All right, this is verse 16. And what agreement hath the temple of Yahweh about Shemal Shai with idols? For ye are the temple of the living power, as the you know, most I have said, I will dwell in them and will walk in them. And I will be their power and they shall be my people. Yeah, the Lord's spirit is within us, man. So we cannot be associating ourselves with wicked Edomites, man. Or any other person that's wicked for the most part, man. All right, now, there is wisdom, okay? You know, if you have a job, okay, obviously you're going to run across these devils because we're in their kingdom. So, you know, you be wise. Scripture say, be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove, you know? So, nonetheless, when you're around them, you be cordial, okay? You know, you don't got to like them, okay? But you just be wise, be cordial. You know, do what you got to do and, and get out of there, man. All right. You know, take the low. OK, understand this is not our kingdom. So we can't be, you know, putting our hands on Esau at this time. You know, but when the time comes, the Lord is going to raise up our kingdom and we're going to have these devils in slavery. So right now we just wait for our turn, man. All right. And, and let them enjoy the last few seconds of their kingdom before the Lord destroys this place. All right. This is Second Corinthians 6 and uh, 17. Wherefore, come out from among them. All right, meaning separate yourself from these wicked people and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. All right, it says, and I will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, with the, saith the Lord Almighty. All right, so that's the point on that right there, man. Okay, so we have to separate ourselves to the Akim, Wa Akwa, to the brothers and sisters. All right, we have to separate ourselves from the wickedness of this world, man. All right, and Esau is all a part of that. That's why he's known as. The prince of this world, okay? And speaking of him being the prince of this world, he wants to set up his new world order, which is him trying to unite all kingdoms under one, which is confusion at the end of the day, man. All right, because the Lord, he set differences between all the nations, man. All right? And um, let me see here. I get a scripture on that. Deuteronomy 32 and verse 8, when the Most High divided, to the nations, their inheritance, meaning he gave each and every nation something to inherit, all right? So that was a thing of division, okay? It says, when he separated the sons of Adam, meaning so we all come from Adam, but there was a chosen line out of the sons of Adam, which is known as the sons of God, all right, which is referring to the Israelites, okay, back in those times, all right? There was a separation from the nation of Israel from these other nations, man. That's why the scripture is saying in Ezekiel that all the trees of the garden envied um envied uh adam roughly paraphrasing okay and that he could not hide himself among the trees because israel was separate from those other nations even now you see jake who might look like someone of another nation but their spirit is separate from the ways of those people or those other nations man all right it's all spiritual okay it says he said the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of israel for the lord's portion is his people jacob is a lot of his inheritance all right, so the Lord's portion 
his part are the Israelites. That's his people, okay? Those are the ones he's dealing with. Those are the ones that he separated unto himself, man, all right? Um, also, in the book of uh, Sirach, all right, the 33rd chapter, if I'm not mistaken. All right, this is Sirach, Ecclesiastes 33, and uh, verse 10, it says, And all men are created from the ground, and Adam was created of earth. And much knowledge of the Lord have divided them and made their ways diverse. Okay, so that's the point of that right there. The Lord has divided each nation and made their ways diverse. Even within the nation, even within the nation of Israel, the Lord separated um, the tribes in different ways. Okay, you know, he, 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 he made certain tribes have certain characters, qualities and characteristics, man, and certain spirits to themselves. Okay, so that goes to show you the Most High is about division. The Most High is about separation. And in order to divide things, that's really a form of order, okay? Because if you just have a bunch of different things jumbled up together, where's the order in that? And the scriptures say, let all things be done decently in order. Everyone has their own position. Everyone has their use. Everyone has their role, okay? Uh, the eye is different from the ear, but yet they both have important uh, key roles in the body. But yet they're both two different, completely different body parts, man, you see? So everyone has their own purpose, okay? So the Most High is about division, okay? The only time the Most High is about unity is when it's in righteousness, all right? This is Sirach, Ecclesiastes 33 and 11. I'll read it again. In much knowledge the Lord hath divided them and made their ways diverse. Some of them hath he blessed and exalted, like with the nation of Israel. And some of them hath he sanctified and set near himself. But some of them hath he cursed and brought low and turned out of their places. As the clay is in the potter's hand to fashion it at his pleasure, so man is in the hand of him that made him to render them as liketh him best. All right, so basically the Lord, he creates us like, like a potter creating, a, you know, something with clay. All right, it's however the potter sees fit in his mind, and that's how he's going to form the clay to be. Same thing with the Most High, man. The Most High seen us fit to make us for a certain purpose, and that's what he created us for, man. So Esau, you were fit to be the devil. All right, the Most High created you to be the devil. So just go ahead and be the best devil you could be, man. All right? Till the Lord takes your ass out. All right? And that's exactly what you're going to do. Okay? And you live it up, Esau. All right? We don't, you don't have nothing to do with the righteousness of the Yahweh Bashem al -Shai. You were created to be the wicked. Okay? It says, Sirach or Ecclesiastes 33. And that's why the scriptures say in Sirach 34 and um, verse 4, of an unclean thing, what can be cleansed? You're an unclean thing, Esau. All right, you're actually known as a clean leper, all right, which is kind of like an oxymoron, low key, because to be a leper or to have leprosy is unclean. But the thing is, you're a natural leper, okay, because the Most High cursed you devils, man, all right, beginning with Cain, who took your pigment, all right. So to look like that is really um, a shame because leprosy is an unclean thing, all right, especially blonde hair. All right, a lot of our women, they like to put blonde hair in their heads, but blonde hair is. Is going off. The scriptures talk about the yellow thin hair. All right, but let me run this, let me go and read this real quick before I get that. It says, "Of an unclean thing, what can be cleansed?" So, Esau, you're an unclean thing. You can never be cleansed. All right. It says, "And from that thing which is false, what truth can come?" And you're known as a serpent. We read about how you about you set up your kingdom with deceit. So, your what truth can come from you? You you were born to be false. The scriptures say in Psalms 58 and 3. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. So even as a baby, goo goo gaga, you still spitting lies, man. All right? You know, because that's just your spirit. All right? Now, you get the yellow thing here for edification. This is Leviticus 13 and 30. Then the priest shall see the plague. And behold, if it be deeper than the skin, and it there be in it a yellow thin hair, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is the dry skull, even a leprosy upon the head or beard. So when you have blonde hair, that's a form of leprosy, and that's an unclean thing. All right, the Most High is not dealing with that. Okay. Now, um, that's a part of works of the flesh, uncleanness. All right. Now, like I said, go back to this devil. You know how the Lord separated us from these different nations. All right. This is 2nd Ezra 6. And, uh, Darcy, let me go back to Sirach. 
before I move on. Sirach or Ecclesiasticus 3. And verse 14, good is set against evil and life against death. And that's why we don't get along with you devils, because the nation of Israel, by nature, they are good people. Okay? But the ways of wickedness seduce them. So now they go and follow after the ways of death. But Israel naturally brings forth life, man. Jacob is a lively people. Okay? Scriptures talk about how the Hebrew women are lively women. All right? And the scriptures... and the woman is made in the image of the man. That's the man's glory. A man's glory is his woman. So a woman, she takes on the likeness of what her man does most of the time. Okay? So point being, if the women are lively, how much more the men, all right, which bring forth the nation of Israel. Okay? The Lord actually said we are as lively stones, built up a spiritual house, you know? But nonetheless, we just rock our Ecclesiastes 33 and 14. I'll read it again. Good is said against evil and life against Death, so is the godly against the sinner, and the sinner against the godly. So look upon all the works of the Most High, and there are two and two, one against another. So the Most High, he's balanced. He created a nation to be ultimately righteous, and he created a nation to be ultimately wicked. That's balance right there, man. Okay? Now let's go and get another scripture real quick to prove how the Most High separated us from the nations. All right? This is 2 Ezra 54. 2 Ezra 6 and verse 54. And of these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all, and the people also whom thou hast chosen. All right, so of him come we all, right? But it says, and the people whom thou hast chosen, meaning the nation of Israel. It says, all this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. All right, so the Lord made the world for the nation of Israel's sake. It says, as for the other people which also come of Adam, Thou hast said that they are nothing but be like unto spittle. So the Lord said that you other nations are like spit to him, man. When you spit on the ground, you don't care about that spit, man. Or you're 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 basically rejecting it from the body from the, from your body. That's why you're spitting it out. All right. So the Lord said you other nations are like spit unto him. <laughs> okay. It says. It says thou hast said that they are nothing but be like unto spittle. And has likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. So if you have a big bucket of water and a couple of drops fall out, the Lord said those drops that fall out the bucket are like the abundance of those nations. So that means that the Lord hates you nations. He doesn't care about you other nations, man. You other nations don't mean anything to him. You other nations were created to serve the nation of Israel. That's your purpose. All right. The Lord is not dealing with you other nations on an intimacy, on an intimacy of a spiritual level and righteousness, the Lord is not dealing with other nations. The other nations are nothing to him, okay? The Lord ain't even dealing with two-thirds of our people, man. And they're Israel, and they're Israelites, man. You know? And that's the point right there, right there. Okay? Now, also in the book of Second Ezra, the third chapter, if I'm not mistaken, all right, Second Ezra 3, starting at verse 13. I'm just going to go straight to the point. You can really start from the top, but I'm going to go straight to the point. It says, Now when they lived so wickedly before thee, thou didst choose thee a man from among them, whose name was Abraham. Him thou lovest, and of him only thou shewest thy will, and made us an everlasting covenant with him, promising him that thou wouldst never forsake his seed. And when you read Romans the ninth chapter, it tells you that Israel was accounted for the seed. Israel and Isaac, all right, because Christ saying Isaac saw thy seed be called, and the Lord he chose Jacob over Esau, because Esau and Jacob came from Isaac, all right? So it says, him love, him thou lovest, and unto him only shewest thou, thou surely, it's like you, unto him only thou shewest thy will, and made us an everlasting covenant with him, promising him that thou wouldest never forsake his seed, and unto him thou gavest Isaac, and unto Isaac also thou gavest Jacob and Esau. As for Jacob, thou didst choose him to thee, and put by Esau, so Jacob and so Jacob became a great multitude. That's why it tells you in Romans, the ninth chapter. All right. Romans 9 and verse. Um, let me start from 4. It says, who are Israelites? To whom pertaineth the adoption? So the adoption that you read about in the New Testament, that's referring for the nation of Israel. All right. It says, and the glory. So the glory of the kingdom is for the nation of Israel. And the covenants, so the new covenant, is given to the nation of Israel. You can also read about that in Hebrews, the eighth chapter. The Lord said he makes a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, referring to the northern and the southern kingdom. Okay? 
It says, and the giving of the law. The law was given unto the nation of Israel for a covenant. Okay. It says, uh, and the service of the Most High. We're the only nation by technicality that can serve Yahweh Hashem Shai. All right. It says, and the promises. All right. Now, the other nations, they can serve the Lord too. All right. Because the Lord talked about how he set up uh, um, Darius. Sorry. All right. Or it might have been, it was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was uh, Cyrus, maybe. Let's see. Yep, Cyrus, the water. This is uh, Isaiah 45 and 1. That said, the Lord to his anointed to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden to subdue nations before him. I mean, the Lord gave him up to uh, come into rulership. All right, it says... I will and I will loose the loins of the kings to open before him to two leave gates and the gates shall not be shut. All right. So the Lord, he set this devil up, which was the heathen of the medial Persian Empire to help build up the temple. All right. And ultimately, how did he help build up the temple? He allowed the Israelites to go back and build up the second temple. All right. So the other nations, they have their role. You know, the Lord, you know, the Lord can use them for his purpose. All right. But they're truly the only ones that can truly serve you. Bashim Yahweh Shai. Is the nation of Israel okay? And that's how and that's what we're doing. We're going out on the highways and byways, you know, we're doing this work, man, okay? Because the other nations they're not priests, you know, they're not priests unto the Lord, okay? Now they might be priests on the left hand side, but they're not priests on the right hand side, okay? And um, let me go ahead and continue forward through the spirit, all right. Um, let me go back to Romans. Romans, Romans, Romans. Romans 9 and 5. Whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh Mashiach came, who is over all and the most high blessing forever on one. So Yahweh Shai came for the Israelites. Okay. Verse 6. Not as though the word of the most high hath taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Yeah, because you have an Israel of the Most High, and then you have two thirds of our people, which are of the nation of Israel, but they're not accounted as the children of the promise, so to speak, because they're going to die on this side, all right? Now, they're going to receive the promise, you know, but they're just going to have to die on this side, all right? They're not going to receive the promise like the elect will, all right? And Lord, when will we be a part of that number? Verse 7, neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called, right? Because Abraham also had Ishmael, all right? Ishmael was technically Abraham's firstborn, all right? He also had the six sons of Keturah, all right? He had Isaac, but the Lord chose Isaac, okay? It says, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called, verse 8, that is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of the Most High, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed, verse 9, for this is the word of promise. So here, the Lord is about to break down who the children of promise are. It says, at this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had convinced by one, even by our father Isaac, for the children not being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, in that present life, okay, it says that the purpose of the Most High according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. And I was referring to Esau. Esau came out first. So he's going to serve us in the kingdom, okay? It says, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I, have I hated. So the Lord, he hates Esau, okay? He chose Israel over the nation of Edom, man, all right? And that also tells you that in the book of Malachi, all right? The first chapter about how the Lord hated Esau. Like it says in Scripture, as it is written, that's where it's written, Malachi, first chapter, all right? So Apostle Paul was quoting that through the Spirit, all right? And that's the thing, this devil, he about unity but it's in wickedness you know he wants to unite the people under his his new world order okay his one world government and they're and they're and they're gonna implement it too all right and they're using it via this crown royal or the c19 all right you know and that's and then, and then ultimately that one world currency of this one world government is going to be that rfid chip which is the mark of the beast and that maxine is a prelude to that chip okay this is a habakkuk chapter two Starting at verse um, 5, it says, yeah, also, 
start at verse 4. It says, Behold, his soul, which is lifted up, meaning Esau's soul, he's lifted up, he's proud, okay? It says, is not upright in him. He's not born to be upright. He was born to be the wicked. All right, it says, but the just shall live by faith. Yeah, you know, Lord willing, we be a part of the elect. We are going to be living by faith, man, and especially in these last times, man, all right? Because in these last days, you're not going to be able to have the luxury to just get up and go to the supermarket, get up, go to Walmart, get up, go to Burger King, you know what I'm saying? All this other stuff. You're not going to have that luxury, okay, in these last days because the Lord is 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 making a clear division and a clear separation of the true followers and the ones who are fakers, man, okay? Because right now, the people, they could still lean on Esau society. They're not truly following Yahweh Bashim Shah, okay? But in the times to come, all right, the Lord is going to make a clear uh, separation. Either you're down with Esau or you're down with Yahweh Bashim Shah. And how will that allegiance be proven? Via whoever uh, adheres to Esau's system, whoever takes his chip, whoever takes his Maxine, okay, then you're going to know, okay, they're not, they don't truly trust in Yahweh Bashim Shah. They trust in man, and that's going to be a snare unto them, all right? This is Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 5. Yet also because he transgresses by wine, meaning his doctrines and philosophies, it says he is a proud man. All right. He's a proud man. Meaning, you know, it's plain and simple. Esau is prideful. Okay. You so called white people, you Edomites, you are prideful. You are known as the most proud in the scriptures. All right. And you're so proud, you think your kingdom is going to last forever. Every other heathen nation the Most High set up had a, a beginning and a downfall. All right, and here it is. You're the most basis of the nations. All right, scriptures call you the basis of men. You're the lowest of the low when it comes to heathen. All right, and you and you think that the Lord is going to let your kingdom go on for forever? Like we read earlier. All right, shall the throne of iniquity have an, um, fellowship with thee? You know, most I'm not going to let you rule forever, man. The only nation that's going to be ruling forever is the nation of Israel, man. All right, that's why scripture says the days of man can be numbered, but the days of Israel are innumerable. All right, because we're going to have an eternal righteous excellency. All right, and our kingdom is going to be on for forever and ever, man, as you read in the book of Daniel. All right, it says, neither keep it at home. Yeah, this devil want to be in everybody else's backyard, man. He want to go and conquer everybody else's nation. All right, instead of working on his own, okay? It says, who enlarges his desire as hell. Yeah, you devils are never satisfied, man. You want to go and conquer everyone and everything, man, okay? It says, and is as death, all right? You are as death. You bring forth the ways of death, man, okay? If you're not physically killing somebody, spiritually you're killing somebody with your confusion that you bring forth, all right? It says, and cannot be satisfied. Yeah, you're you're greedy, okay? But gathereth unto him all nations and heapeth unto him all people. And that's what you're going to do via your new world order, all right? And this is nothing new, okay? Because they had the same content. Back then, during the time of the Tower of Babel, but also in First Maccabees with Antiochus Epiphanes, all right, which brothers is saying through the spirit that they believe Joe Biden is uh, Antiochus Epiphanes, man, in the reincarnation. All right, it says First Maccabees 1, and starting at verse 10. And there came out of them a wicked root, meaning a wicked um, progenitor from the seed line of the nation of Israel. I mean, it's like a, uh, Edom. That was a slip of the tongue. All right, for a, a wicked seed. From the nation of Edom, which they're all wicked, all right, but Antiochus Epiphanes was a true devil, man, all right, when you read about his history, it says, and there came out of wicked, out of them a wicked root, Antiochus surnamed Epiphanes, all right, or Antiochus IV, all right, a son of Antiochus the king, who had been a hostage at Rome, and he reigned in the hundred and thirty and seventh year in the kingdom of the Greeks. In those days went there out of Israel wicked men who persuaded many, saying, let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us. For since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. And that's the same sellouts of our people, the same sambos of our people. OK, what you people know as Uncle Tom's. But the real the real term, the real correct term is a sambo. All right. These people are sellouts, man. The ones who want to go and take Esau's Maxine, they want to go and take his chip. They want to keep his society running. OK, those are our people who trust in Egypt. Those are our people who trust in oppression and they don't trust in Yahweh Hashem El Shai. And that's why the Lord is going to destroy them for that, lest they repent. OK, it says. Verse 12. So this device pleased them well. And then certain of the people were so forward herein that they went to the king who gave them license to do after the ordinances of the heathen. Yeah, they went out of their way to go follow after his wickedness. You know, now you have a lot of our people who line up. Or who A lot of our people who are ready to take that Maxine, man. So they're going out of their way to go after to get a license. 
from the king to go after his wickedness, man. All right, because ultimately, when you um when you go into license, okay, which let's do that real quick through spirit. All right, because when you when you're going into a license, all right, you're asking them for permission to go after their wickedness. All right. And so that's basically like, you know, in modern day times, that's basically like people going out their way to get the maxine. People going out their way to get the chip. They're asking license of the king to, you know, roam around in his society, in his wicked kingdom. All right. So it says license. This is etymology. Formal authorization, official permission, permit, privilege. From old French, license, freedom, liberty, power, possibility, permission. From Latin, licentia, freedom, liberty, unrestrained liberty. Wantonness, presumption, from licentum, nominative, license, present participle of licere or licere, to be allowed, be lawful, from pi root, like, which means to offer, bargain, or make a bid, and it says possibly source of lettuce, let's coo, let's do, I come to terms, it says meaning formal, usually written permission from authority to do something, marry, hunt, drive, etc., it's first attested early 15th century, meaning excessive liberty, disregard of propriety. In English, is from mid 15th century. In Middle English, spelled license, license, like uh, license and license. Lit license. There have been attempts to confine license to verbal use and license to now used to compare advice, advice, device, device, and C note in OED. In the U.S., license tends to serve both as verb and noun. All right, so that's really the point. So they're asking permission to do this stuff. Okay. Um, let me see real quick. Bear with me. It says, um, Salaki, so give me one second. Let me see if I can find this scripture real quick. All right. And it's the same thing that happened during the time of the Tower of Babel when the Lord confounded the nations. All right, they all wanted to set up a one world language. Okay, Genesis 11 and 1, it says, And the whole earth was one, was of one language and of one speech, man. Okay, you know, but the Lord, he confounded the, he confounded the languages, man. All right, because when you keep reading on, verse 2, And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, and that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, Shinar and they dwelt there, and they said one to another, go to and let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime and had they for mortar. And they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, behold, the people is one and they all have one language. It says, and this begin, and this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them. All right, that's the thing, because there's balance, man. All right, the scriptures say there's a time to embrace, and there's a time to refrain from embracing. So sometimes you need to separate yourself, man. All right, that's that's all a balance at the end of the day. So the Lord said, nothing to be restrained from them. All right, which they have imagined to do. All right, it says, go to, let us go down, and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of the whole earth, and they left off to build the city. And confounded language means they give them different dialects, man, all right, so that they wouldn't be on one accord, okay? Because right now is not the time for the one world order. The new world order, the one world order will be in righteousness when all languages will be, or all nations will be under one consent to serve Yahweh Basham El Shai. tells it in Zephaniah, the third chapter, in the ninth verse, okay? So now going back to First Maccabees 1. All right, let me skip down to verse 41. It says, Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people and everyone should leave his laws. So all the heathen had agreed according to the commandment of the king. So it says all the heathen agreed, man. All right, but you're going to, just like how in these times now, you're going to have heathen agree to his kingdom. Well, guess what? Same way how you're going to have men disagree to his kingdom and those men. All right, let me be the men of the Lord. All right, now you might have some people who are of the world that they disagree with the kingdom too. But, you know, at the end of the day, if the Lord is not dealing with them, it doesn't really matter. You know what I'm saying? To be honest, okay?
Because if you're an Edomite and you don't agree with the Edomite devil system, all right, well, then that just sucks for you because Yahweh Bashem is not taking care of you at the end of the day. The Lord doesn't care for you devils, man. All right, all you scriptures say, if his children be multiplied, it is for the sword, you know. So basically the Lord is saying, if you people procreate, if you Edomites procreate, it's just for your destruction. All right, this is 2 Corinthians. Oh, we actually read the scripture. All right, well, I guess the point has been made. You know, so uh Lord's will the video was edifying. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah, Bashem, Kakadash, double honor to the elders and apostles, great milson, every well, peace and blessings to the elect of Israel, Shalom and a Baba Ball. Moral of the story, we do not unite with wickedness.